A year ago, I posted a video called, Was Classic Game Room the Best Retro Gaming Show? I made a passionate case that it was the best, and how it was sad that it was no longer around. But near the end of that video, I suggested that it should come back, and gave some tips on how to make the comeback work. That's what I do, I meddle in the affairs of other channels. And to my surprise, Classic Game Room did come back. And today I wanted to take a look at what that comeback has been like. Like what are the view counts and what kind of videos has he been producing? And by him, I mean Mark Bustler, the main guy behind Classic Game Room. I also have a small update on Derek, who is another person associated with Classic Game Room. He was on the spinoff show called CGR Undertow. And finally, near the end of this video, I want to attempt to answer the question as to whether or not I had any kind of influence on the comeback of Classic Game Room. Did Mark watch that video of mine and decide to come back? I went through the history of CGR in that video, but in a nutshell, it was a show that predated YouTube itself, and when it did come to YouTube, it found a lot of success, amassing around 1.5 million views a day at its peak, which was across multiple channels. Things went downhill when YouTube started enforcing copyright claims, causing the channel to lose 90% of its revenue. Attempts were made to save the show, moving to Daily Motion, utilizing Patreon and Amazon Prime, but ultimately the show went away, with the last game review on YouTube being posted in 2017. Eventually, Mark turned CGR into a publishing company. Now, six years later, the show is back. It started with a trickle. He had rebranded his main channel to support his publishing company, but during that time he was making some short videos on Instagram and TikTok that mostly featured music playing over some images of him messing around with video game equipment. At this point, these videos were like a small fraction of what Classic Game Room used to be. But in early 2023, the pace of those uploads increased, and he started appearing more and adding a little bit of narration to them. As he began to promote the Blu-ray, Okay of CGR 2085. That was a one season Amazon exclusive where he made these very long episodes and they were originally available on Amazon in 2018. As the year 2023 kept going, he announced through these short videos a second season of CGR 2085. And in those short videos, he filmed himself filming those new videos. I know this is complicated, but we'll get through it. That new season will be released in 2024. And I don't know if he has said it, but I don't think we'll see those on YouTube. They will be on Blu-ray. But on May 18th, 2023, he released a short video that said he was going to bring CGR back. So, Classic Game Room's gonna come back, but it's gonna be different. I'm working on some new reviews, working on clips, little music videos and stuff, all kinds of fun things. In July 2023, he started posting slightly longer videos, starting with two minute ones and then they gradually grew longer. His most viewed long form video of this comeback period is Ninja Golf at 22,000 views. It was a YouTube video. Most of his newest videos are getting between 3 and 10,000 views after their initial week. Bear in mind, the channel has 434,000 subs. In the history section of his website, Classic Game Room, Com, he acknowledges that 95% of subs are not seeing the new videos. But he went on to say that the response from those who did see the videos has been fantastic, and he has sold a lot of his glassware, the same type of glassware he had back in the day. Just days before I made this video, he made an announcement video. He said that he had looked at everything and has decided to continue doing Classic Game Room at least through 2024, leading up to the show's 25th anniversary. Uh, so that's the Classic Game Room shows on YouTube, that's the Classic Game Room content on Instagram, and that's the Classic Game Room content on TikTok. He also gave a little bit more information on the past of Classic Game Room. He mentioned the old show was part of a larger company, and when that show became ravaged by the copyright claims, it was losing so much money, it was threatening to bring down the entire company, so he had to cut it loose. He also said most of the copyright was from the music within the games that he reviewed. He turned CGR into a publishing company called CGR Publishing. On his 
his site, he mentions that it was a huge success as it became a, quote, major publisher of rare and obscure reproductions of classic books, art books, guidebooks, and other print materials like coloring books and comics. He then created something called Turbo Volcano and a project called Omega Ronin. I never quite understood exactly what those things are, but I think Omega Ronin is a music project with some animation to it, and he said it became a huge success. All this was happening before the recent return of Classic Game Room. He goes on to say in that video that his aha moment came when he realized that he could use his own music to do the Classic Game Room show, and that would prevent any copyright issues. I would add that this also simplifies the video because he can play music during half of the review and not have to add voice work to that part. But each of his new videos has been slightly different so it's hard to tell uh, what kind of pattern he's going to be getting into. And I'll say that the music he's been playing is very good. He calls it Synthwave which I don't know much about. I wish I could play some of it for you but ironically that might lead to a copyright claim by him. Mark coming back to doing long-form videos on YouTube was a very unlikely thing to happen. There's no other way to say this. He hates YouTube. That's very apparent in the history section of his website. Quote, their AI, meaning YouTube's, couldn't differentiate between journalism and plagiarism, and the music from the game reviews killed it all. Over the next five years, the channel lost 90% of its ad revenue. We complained. They didn't care. They treated us like garbage. And he posted another update video today, and he said this about YouTube. Was, it's always what I wanted the show to be, but could never produce it like that on um, a certain garbage social media monopoly. And I could find a lot of other examples, but he's not a big fan of YouTube, and he's not a big fan of social media in general. It seeps out a lot in his work, in interviews, and in that company history that I've been reading from. Like I said, his return to YouTube was very unlikely, given his feelings toward YouTube. There's this saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. But in Mark's case, I think that saying can be narrowed down to the enemy is my friend. Can he be friends with YouTube once again? Time will tell. But based on everything he's been saying, things have been going well for Classic Game Room, and I think that's going to end up benefiting anyone that watches this kind of content. I think it's good for the retro gaming space on YouTube, and I personally wish him the best of luck. Now let's cut to the chase. Did my video a year ago convince Mark to bring CGR back? Near the end of that video, I mentioned that a relaunch was very unlikely, but if it were to happen, I made some suggestions on how to make it successful and profitable. Here's a condensed version of what I said. With at least eight minute videos, you can actually put a commercial in the middle of the video and it would make things a little bit more profitable. And if he did a well advertised Patreon push to bring back the channel, I think there would be some people that would do that. And I, and I think the first video he should make is a review of Truxton. I think a lot of people would be talking about his channel again if he were to do that. Along with that, I think he should do some kind of crowdfunding option. Just say, hey, the show's coming back and if I raise $50,000 or something, I'll restart it and you'll get me back. Make a stretch and goal if you reach 100,000 uh, that you would bring back Derek. Now I realize that I am a lower YouTuber with only 20,000 subs and I'm giving advice to somebody who is a lot more successful at YouTube. I understand why that might be odd, but let me get back to those suggestions. He definitely went beyond eight minutes in his newest videos, but he already knew to do that. As for the Patreon push, that hasn't happened yet from what I've seen. As far as Truxton, the Truxton 2 arcade game was one of the first things he started showing in his videos around this rebirth period. To live the life of Truxton is to live a life of honor while shooting things with lasers and it eventually ended up being a full-length review. Not the first one, though. I doubt that he went out and bought a Truxton 2 arcade game after seeing my video. Now, in regards to Derek, from what I've watched, he hasn't been mentioned by name in any of Mark's announcements or anything like that. 
But there was a tweet from Derek that I found pretty interesting. And this was on July 15th, 2023. So this was during the whole rebirth period for Classic Game Room. And he says, let's say I wanted to capture game footage from the Switch and Nintendo's retro consoles. What device or equipment do I need to do that? And if I only own a MacBook, is this even possible? Assume I have no idea what I'm doing. Now he could just be wanting to make his own show or perhaps something else is in the works. He's asking about recording for a Switch and some of Nintendo's retro consoles. So it seems like a, a mildly big first step to making videos on your own. I haven't seen him tweet anything else in regards to this. So we'll see what it ends up being, if it ends up being anything at all. I'll just add one more thing about him. There was an interview that he did, and you can tell by the way he was saying things that he loved Classic Game Room and he hated leaving it. But yeah, anyway, once once Undertow was gone, I, I it's hard for me to like watch that kind of stuff because I miss it so much. Um, and I miss those days so much. I think he would hop back aboard if it was offered to him. Anyway, that video, which I made a year ago, over some stretches was appearing very high up in the search results for people searching on classic game room. Now, not a lot of people search on that term, but some people still do every day. My point is that it was visible to people and it makes it more likely that Mark actually saw the video. I just thought I would add that part. But honestly, I don't think I had any influence on his return. And I think all the things that have happened have happened organically. But if that video did have an influence on him, and he's watching this show right now, maybe he can slip something into one of his videos to indicate that. And I'm going to pick a phrase, chips and salsa. If he says the words chips and salsa in one of his upcoming videos, that will mean that I have influenced him. But if we never hear that word in any of his upcoming videos, then we'll know for sure that I had no influence at all. And I'm perfectly fine with that. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. May your games make you happy and smart, and may people respect you for playing them. So long, everybody.